what's good what's good youtube they live we sleep revealing the wild man connection i go by the name pushy push if you haven't heard of me down below is my TikTok at pushy.push i drop a lot of videos over there also drop a like and subscribe right here to pushy push at my youtube hit that bell notification so you can have all the updates and my new videos when i drop them but let's get into this one because this one is a wild one right here so this image right here it's the beginning of me really really starting to understand how we view you know our, our past or even the things that we are told about our past like i realize there are double meanings to almost everything that we've learned so even with this picture it comes with double meanings you know there is a a modern way of looking at this and then there's a ancient way of looking at this so what i'm revealing is the wild man connection people who have animal dna in them like was the was there success with mixing a regular person with an animal or an animal type being person so that's what we're going to be looking at this picture right here though is a great example of animal mixture into man like the baphomet right here most people would associate this with sex and this image has nothing to do with sex this image right here is actually a man and a female it's the image of a man and a female both having um this dna that's inside of them so they embody the man and the female in one image and then you can see on his lap you know it has the the dna snake symbol with the pole and you can see that the pope has it in his hand and what i'm essentially saying is people mingled with something that was not normal and this thing that we call the wild man it exists because people were using it in fertility rites and they mingled enough with them that they become like they begin to look normal like normal people so you can't tell how they are or what they look like today you can only understand who they are when they begin to talk so this priest is sitting with that symbol in his hand and it's a prime example of someone who could have this dna in them and they look totally normal so we're going to look at this on a different level you know so starting right here this takes it all the way to the left side because santa claus is a household name you know we're not taught that this is a bad person you know we're taught that this thing brings you uh gifts if you're good you know throughout the year but this is the thing when i say how we look at history today and how things were in an ancient time you know before the 12th century you know things below the 6th century so this says santa claus the last of the wild men and that has to make you wonder something right there what do they mean when they say santa claus the last of the wild man and it, then it talks about the origins and evolution of saint nicholas spanning eighty thousand wars the origin and evolution of saint nicholas the origin and evolution of saint nicholas i've seen black priests that's called saint nicholas I've seen white priests that's called St. Nicholas, but I've never seen a wild man that is called St. Nicholas. So it makes me wonder who was the first, you know, or is this person adopting that name? But Santa Claus, the last wild man. When I started to research this, 
it went into a whole nother level. So I didn't know this about Santa Claus when Santa was a shaman. So things start to change up because we have the impression of a Santa that comes down a chimney. But in the ancient time, the Santa necessarily didn't dress up like this. I, and, I, and I personally think that this is a representation of multiple people. It's just speaking of it as one. But it says when Santa was a shaman, when Santa was a magician or when Santa was a priest, that right there, I did not know that there was writing about Santa in this type of way right here. There's only the impression that, you know, there is this, this only this Christmas side. So it really had me go and look into this deeper when I realized like, you know, you've got Santa Claus, the wild man, and then now Santa is a shaman. So I end up finding this <clears throat> and it, it's talking just about Santa and it's and it's interesting what it says. It says, however, far from being the far shoot of St. Nicholas of Turkey, Santa Claus is the last of a long line of what scholars call wild men who were worshipped in ancient European fertility rites and came to America through Pennsylvania's Germans. That is a lot right there. Santa Claus is the last of a long line of what scholars call wild men who were worshipped in ancient fertility rites. So if you use the word fertility rites, then that means that people were mingling with the wild man. People were sleeping with the wild man. So if it was a Yeti-like creature, people were sleeping with that wild man and i think this is the reason why santa could look like this or the wild man can look like a normal man it's because if you have a a practice of mingling eventually you know the wild man might not look wild anymore he just might have whatever bloodline that is in them but that took me for one right there that there was ancient fertility rites in europe with the wild man and then for it to go further and say, and it came to America through Pennsylvania's German. So this is talking about people who look normal, who has this DNA in them migrating into America, you know, and they possibly was Germans. That is, that's pretty wild right there, you know? Let me look at this one. When I further went into the study, I ended up coming across this tree. And, you know, I had it for a while, but I never was able to make sense of it, you know, until I had those other parts right there. So Santa Claus family tree. And then the person who made this put wild man. And it's this person created this in 2008. And, you know, I went through all the names. I'm not going to go through all these names, but I'm going to look at two sides that is inside of here because it was very eye catching. So if you zoom in, it, it's labeled <clears throat> under this tree, myths, water spirits, primates, winter man, lux, trickster, dark helper, shaman, folklore. So all of these names right here are the various names that the wild man possess. So we have to understand that there's female wild man and, you know, and male. So male and female, both like animal type people. This is saying that these are the many names of the wild man. It goes back right here, Santa Claus family tree. And it says wild man. All the many names. If we look at this one in the middle, it's called Lux, L-U-X. This got me right here. I can read off some of the names. It said Old Nick. It says Demon, Lucifer, uh, the Great Man, Jabuk, Angel of Light, Prince of Darkness, 
adversary, great deceiver, 666, the evil one, Beelzebub, Satan, devil. Now, I wondered, why did this person call the wild man these names that are used inside of the Bible? And this is where things really, really took a turn because, again, like I said earlier, we are taught that certain things mean what they mean in these times. But in another time, in an ancient time, even the name Satan did not mean it like mean like how we use it today, you know, so this is where this becomes interesting right here because it's being connected to a wild man, a half animal man person. And people have drawn the devil up like that. Another one to the right right here, it says shaman. Shamans. I had to go back. And that's what this said when Santa was a shaman. Now, I didn't know about this. So when I came to that tree right there and I'm like seeing that it called it a shaman saying Santa, the wild man is a shaman. And in this book is saying that Santa, when Santa was a shaman, it brings some connection. The book is saying when Santa was a shaman and on this Santa Claus tree, they have Santa as or the wild man Santa as a shaman and the many names of the shaman. Which the wild man held is astrologer, magi, sorcerer, noid, like the, the Joker on the Domino's pizza, necromancer, ventriloquist, wizard, conqueror, magician, shaman. So it's saying that this Santa was a shaman, was a magician, was a ventriloquist. When you start hearing that right there, the other word kicks in. Trickster. So it's saying that the wild man is Satan. It's also a trickster and it's a shaman, a magic, a magician. So I'm saying all this right here to get ready to go into the Bible itself, because, you know, we have a perception about what the Satan is. And this person has said that the Satan in the older time was a wild man. So we'll go right here to this verse and we'll compare all this up. It says the huge dragon, the ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan who deceived the world. Well, one thing I had to realize is something is being described four times. So the huge dragon, the ancient serpent, that's two descriptions, who is called the devil and Satan. Okay. We go back here. The guy is saying that the wild man used to be called the devil and Satan. But see, we have this thought of a furry, hairy people. And this is saying Santa is a wild man. And he's also the devil and he's also Satan and he's also a shaman, which is a magician. So when we go back to here, the huge dragon, the ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, I want to make another comparison and then bring it all back. So this picture right here helped me with this right here. It, it totally helped me out. So these are called lilustrious. Um, the word lilustrious kind of reminds me of the word lichen, like uh, the movie Underworld, you know, when they had the werewolves. Well, the one that we're looking at is right here to the right, figure three, right here to the right, the guy to the bottom right. He has something interesting that is writ above, written above his head that I had to translate. And when I translated that, it gave me a totally different understanding. So when I read it, it goes patar, ania, rum, quez, dragente. So it's all in Latin. So I translated what was above his head in order to understand what am I looking at? So the first word, patar, father, 
And the other word was any or room quest of the ancient. So father of the ancients. And then the other word was dragente, dragon, dragon. So father of the ancient dragon. That's what this says on this man's, like right above his head, father of the ancient dragon. So I realized that people who had this type of DNA in them were called dragons. And they're saying that this is an ancient dragon right here. This is the father of the ancient dragon, Patar, father of the ancient dragon. So we're talking about something, I guess you would call it the Satan in its original time. Like this is the Satan, this is the devil, this is the dragon, this is the father of the ancient dragon. So when you come back to the scriptures, because this gotta make sense, the huge dragon, the ancient serpent, was called devil and Satan. Well, this guy, is called the ancient dragon. What makes him a deceiver? Because he speaks like a man, he walks like a man, he acts like a man, but his DNA is different. So when we go back here, Santa Claus tree, then I can understand why this person said the devil and Satan. If you're looking at it from an ancient standpoint, an ancient time before the sixth century, it seems to me like these were nicknames um, put on these people who had this type of DNA. And these people, they haven't went away. There's a reason why, you know, I say with the beginning of the video, they live, we sleep, is because we think that they don't exist. But if we go back to the front, they do exist as you see the man holds the sign. So the scripture said the huge, you know, dragon, the ancient serpent. Okay, so the piece with the guy said he was the father of the ancient serpent or the ancient dragon. He's the father. And then you see the priest sitting with what in his hand? The dragon symbol right there. So when you connect all this together, the priest like this is covenanting a bloodline. This Baphomet right here is covenanting a bloodline that exists between a man and a woman. And these creatures, they no longer look like beastly beings. They look normal like me and you. So the priest is walking around with this because it's possible he has this DNA in him. But you can't tell when you look at him. This is what makes him a deceiver because he doesn't look like the beast. He looks normal. How do you know that these people are, you know, uh, the wild man? Well, we got to understand is that these things weren't like our friends. So when you hear someone say, you know, let's depopulate the world, you know, uh, and kill off 9 billion people. That person is a man, but it sees itself different than you. Like we have a species that is trying to take over the world. So it always talks about getting rid of the original people, getting rid of everyone and starting a new group. And even down to the food, like with our FDA, a lot of that poison that's in there that we can't understand why the highest level of government lets it in is because we're asleep. We don't believe that we're dealing with a species of people that look like us, whose DNA is different. We're not believing that. And these people sit in power. So when you get the huge dragon, ancient serpent who was called the devil, who deceived the world, it's a man today. It's in the church, it looks like a priest, and they hold the symbol. That is what this guy is. This guy eventually started looking like a regular man. The hair went away. All the hair went away eventually. And he's sitting in a noble royal position. This is what they used to call a Satan 
and a devil before the 16th century, before the 1611 Bible was put together. Because at that moment, these people become mystical, myth. That's what they become. All right. So this Santa Claus right here, I start to realize that this is a bloodline thing. And these people have made it ancient facility rights with regular people enough to where they look normal. And they have a consciousness to understand that they want to take over everything, take over the world. So when they're coming through Pennsylvania Germans, I can't help but to think, you know, like the Ashkenazi, you know, are they a part of this group? You know, even with the people that are in our government, I believe that, you know, like the movie They Live, you know, we're sitting with people that is not alien, but they are like humanoid because their DNA is different. But again, you'll hear people say, well, they walk amongst us. Yes, they walk amongst you. They look just like us. But this is the image that we are given. They no longer look and 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 sit in this position right here. They don't look like this. I got some interesting pictures, so I don't know about necessarily a man chasing a female with the goat figure, but it's the point that these beasts mingled with the women. They first was capturing the women and mingling with them. Later, at another time, it seems like people decided to mate with them, like accept the mating with them. This is the reason why you go back, it says, who were worshipped in ancient European fertility rites. So you go back right there, it started off something forceful and it seems like people started accepting it. This one right here is interesting because this looks like a Asian Yeti or Asian wild man. And if you go back to the tree, let's go back to the tree. You see right here to the left of Santa Claus, it says Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Abominable, Yeti, Yowie, Skunk Ape. Okay, that's in the family tree. That's in the Santa Claus tree. So is this a Yeti? You know, uh, this looks like an Asian Yeti. And nevertheless, these beings don't look this way anymore like all the hair is gone. They look like normal people. The staff is something we want to look at. Even when I went to old coins, they were being acknowledged. This is a 1500 coin. They were being acknowledged. This is a wild man. He has the staff in his hand, just like the last picture. And this is some of them in his 12th century drawings right here. These are the wild man. As you can see, its face is changing and eventually all that hair goes and it looks like a normal person, but the DNA still remains and they're conscious about it. They believe that their bloodline is better, but I'm showing all that to show this. It can easily look like the conversation is racist. You're like, you know, you, are you saying, you know, a certain group is wild people. I am saying a certain group is wild people, but I'm saying that not everyone. As you can see in this picture, you see that white people were killing the wild man. This is something that not everybody was a part of. We're talking about a species that has managed to blend in by mating with the women. And now it's sitting in a position of power. It looks normal like a person. This is the reason why it's a Satan, why it's a devil, because when it's in the church and it's have you practicing, you know, certain things that shouldn't be in there, that is what makes it a deceiver. So the wild man wasn't liked. It was killed by white people, it, it, you know, so you can't look at this image and be like, this is the white race. No, this is a whole nother species that is trying to mingle. Same thing right here. You can see them throwing them in the fire. You can see the wild man trying to grab the woman because they were stealing the women and then mingling with them. Basically, I believe to 
keep their species going. But somewhere down there, like that page we wrote, it said that the people were practicing ancient fertility rites, sleeping with the wild man. But in the beginning, everybody was fighting the wild man. You get right here. Even the black people were fighting the wild man. So you had black and white people who was fighting these things that was coming and taking the women and mating with them. They were killing these things off right here. So this wild man is not a friend to mankind. So let's go back to the front picture. Very, very first. Very first. This right here, this priest is a wild man. And he holds the symbol. Like I said, the ancient dragon, what we saw over there is a man, a hairy man. That is what the ancient dragon is. And in my opinion, it has this DNA in it. It is a creature that something has made with in particular DNA. So in this setting, you know, I believe it's a particular bird, a particular like wolf-like animal. And I believe that it's snake. And I believe that they had success blending all this DNA into something to where now it walks as a man. And it sits in a position of power. This is why the priest is holding what the Baphomet has in his lap. Because this has everything to do about DNA. It's not about uh, sex. This is about DNA and species. We are in a situation where we have a species trying to take over the world. And the species is sitting currently in power, in government. Let's look at this one right here. This is the example of the species in government. So you see the snake at the top and then the bird at the bottom. This symbol right here is on the Baphomet. So the snake, the pole that the snake sits on and then the bird wings. So the bird wings or these wings is on the back of the Baphomet. And the snake on the pole is sitting in the Baphomet's lap. The snake on the pole is in the hands of the priest. So this symbol right here is a symbol of DNA. It's their symbol, the wild man's symbol. Let's go all the way back. I'm just going all the way back right here. You can see it. The priest has it. The Baphomet has it. This is a symbol of DNA. And they have perfected it to where the man and the female no longer has a beastly look about itself. It looks normal. It looks like regular people. Go all the way back over here. It looks like regular people. Yeah, that's a good one. But this right here is their symbol. And today, check out the medical symbol. The wing is on top of the snake. Now, what you have in that scenario and this will be going into the next video in that scenario right there those are bloodline wars so the snake above the bird wing that is a certain bloodline set and then you have the bird wing above the snake so what's happening is these two bloodlines are fighting each other originally it seems like the snake line was there first and then the bird DNA is added. And then this group that comes with this bird DNA seems to have went to war with this other group. So now the wings is on top inside of our medical symbol. Like I said, these entities, these beings, they look normal. People slept with them. Uh, originally, they was capturing people and mingling with them that way. And then eventually, people started mingling with them in a fertility rite. So they felt like something was divine about mingling with them. And then we get to this part right here, the original Teen Wolf movie. You know, maybe they always been trying to tell us, like you can see that this is a wild man, but when he walks around, he doesn't look all hairy. Like the myth of a man turning from like from a man to a wolf, it doesn't work like that. It's just, this is evolution. 
when the wild man sleeps with a regular person and they continue to do it, the children eventually lose all that hair. So that is what this is. You don't change into this. This you started off and through mingling, like I said, ancient fertility rites, through that mingling right there, this is how you get this guy right here. So he walks amongst us. They live amongst us. That's why I said we sleep, they live, they live. We are asleep because we don't believe this walks amongst us because it looks normal. It looks like everyone else, but it's not about the look anymore. It's a species that has this DNA and is sitting in a position of power. And we don't realize that there is something trying to go to war with man and have been going to war with original man. That means that this entity don't like black and white people like you think. It will use and manipulate one side. So yes, maybe because it looks more on the white side, it's I believe it's manipulating that side. But when it comes to the food you eat, it's destroying everybody. When it comes to the, the climate control, these things are sitting in that pos like that power position. And when they talk about killing 9 billion people or depopulating the world, well, that's every race, leaving only their kind left. This is the reason why I'm going through this right here and, it, and showing like the wild man's origin. And in the next video, I will be going deeper because I want to show like how these wild men are in the Knights Templar are in um, the Christian Crusades. They're all in the history of the Bible. They're not regular people. So in the next video, I'm going to definitely show that right there. But what I just wanted to show here is that you do have beings, a species that live amongst us. They have been in power for some time. The next video i'm going to show all this right here but we are not alone you know and what makes this crazy if i'm showing you black people killing a wild man and white people killing a wild man then you got to understand that there was a time where we all got along we all lived you know the world has been here over a billion years so yeah we got along you have an instigator between us he looks like one group so he's instigating when he goes out, he's the one that's bringing the races. He's the one that's being the evil. You know, this one that that's looks like a man, talks like a man. You know, you call him Satan. But Satan is literally a man who has ever like evolved through mating with regular people. I know that was wow right there. The wild man. Definitely. Uh, tune in for the next one. Um, there will be a part two. So, you know, I'm going to go deeper in this. This is just like to uh, bring a, let's say a beginning understanding with this right here. So we can all be on the same page. And I'm literally saying that we are not alone with that right there. So thank you. And uh, definitely hit that notification right there for the next video. And to the next time.